In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use partial fractions to evaluate the integral of a rational function whose denominator has a repeated linear factor. Specifically, we're looking for rational functions whose denominator contains a factor of the form x minus a raised to the nth power, where n is some number bigger than 1. n could be 2 or 3 or something even larger. When we have such a factor, the partial fraction decomposition for our rational function will contain an expression of the following form. We will have a constant a1 over x minus a, plus a constant a2 over x minus a squared, all the way up to a sub n, uh, some constant a sub n, over x minus a to the nth power, where n is the power of that factor in the denominator of our rational function. So let's take a look at how to use this partial fraction decomposition in an example. So in this example, we'd like to evaluate the integral of x minus 2 over x, x minus 3 squared. This denominator has two linear factors. We have the factor x, which is a non-repeated factor, and we have x minus 3 squared, which means it is repeated with an exponent of 2. And so this means that in order to find our partial fraction decomposition, we need to consider each of these factors separately. We have our non-repeated factor x, and since it's a linear factor, this tells us we're going to have a term a over x, where a is some constant. And now we turn our attention to our repeated factor of x minus 3 squared. Because um, it's x minus 3 squared, we're going to get two terms here for that. We're going to get a constant b over x minus 3 to the first power, plus another constant c over x minus 3 squared. And after the second term, we stop because we've reached the exponent that's in the original integral, which is 2. Um, if this had been x minus 3 cubed in our denominator, we would actually have a third term added on involving x minus 3, and that would be d over x minus 3 cubed. However, since x minus 3 squared is the factor in our denominator, the, we stop after having a term in our partial fraction decomposition with x minus 3 squared. So now that we have this partial fraction decomposition, we'll turn our attention to finding the values of a, b, and c. Our first step will be to multiply through by our original denominator. So we'll multiply everything in sight by x times x minus 3 squared. And when we do that, on the left-hand side, we have just the numerator remaining, x minus 2. Everything else will cancel, since we're multiplying by the denominator. Um, in our first term, we'll multiply a over x by x times x minus 3 squared. And of course, the x's will cancel, but the x minus 3 squared will remain. So we'll have a times x minus 3 quantity squared. When we multiply b over x minus 3 by this quantity, uh, we will have b, and then, of course, multiplied by x. And then one of the x minus 3s from the square will cancel with the denominator, but we will still have an x minus 3 remaining, since we're multiplying by two factors of it. And in the third term, the x minus 3 squareds cancel completely, and we're just left with c times x. We can now do some strategic substitution uh, to solve for some of our variables. Uh, for example, we could let x equal to 0. And when we do that, on the left-hand side, we get 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. We get a times 0 minus 3 quantity squared, so that's negative 3 squared, so it's a times positive 9. And then we get a 0 everywhere else because the b and c terms both are multiplied by x, which is 0 here. And so we see that a is going to equal the fraction negative 2 ninths. We could also let x equal to 3 here. And when we do that, on the left-hand side, we get 3 minus 2, which is 1. And at this point, we see that the a term will, and the b term will disappear because of the x minus 3 factors. And so we're just left with c times 3. And so here we see that c is going to equal 1 divided by 3, or 1 third. So we have a is equal to negative 2 ninths, and c is equal to 1 third. The last constant we need to find is the value for b. However, by looking at this equation, we might be a little stumped about what we need to do. 
um, any value that we substitute in for x um, to get rid of one of the other terms will also get rid of the b term. If we let x equal 0 or 3, as we've already done, we see that the b term disappears. And there's no other way to get rid of a and c in this equation. So what we need to do is actually to substitute a and c into our equation. And now we can pick any value of x that will work. Um, and we will be able to evaluate this for b, since it will be the only unknown value in our equation. So here we have our equation with negative 2 ninths substituted in for a and 1 third substituted in for c. And now we're going to let x be any number we want to solve for b. Now we do want to be a little careful here because we do have fractions and we would like to make the arithmetic um, a, you know, as simple as possible in order to solve for b. And so we can certainly substitute in something like x equal 1, but then we're going to have to deal with, with fractions in the arithmetic. However, just a little bit of thinking tells us that if we let x equal to 6 here, everything in sight will be whole numbers. On the left-hand side, we get 6 minus 2, which will be 4. On the right-hand side, we will have negative 2 ninths uh, multiplied by 6 minus 3 squared. That's 3 squared, which is 9. So we can see the 9s will ultimately cancel out there. And here we have b times 6 times 6 minus 3, which is 3 and one-third uh, times 6 here, um, substituting 6 in for x. And so we get 4 um, is going to equal negative 2 plus 18b plus 2. And of course, the plus 2 and negative 2 will cancel, and so we are left with simply 4 equals 18b. And from that, we can conclude that b is going to be 4 18ths or 2 ninths. And so here we found a and c first, substituted those in, and then found b um, using those values and any other choice of x. And this is a very standard um, process when we have a repeated linear factor in our denominator. So now using these values of a, b, and c, we can rewrite our original integral as the integral of negative 2 ninths over x plus 2 ninths over x minus 3 plus one-third over x minus three quantity squared dx. We can now easily evaluate uh, this integral by finding antiderivatives for each of our three terms. Notice the first two will involve a natural log antiderivative, since we have a constant over a linear factor. However, the third one will involve a power rule because we have a, uh, a square in the denominator. We have x minus three squared instead of just x minus three. And so this third term here will involve just a power rule. And so here we go from left to right. We have negative 2 ninths, natural log of the absolute value of x, plus 2 ninths, natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3, uh, plus 1 third times negative of x minus 3 to the negative first power, all plus c. For the third term, notice that we can rewrite um, that original term as x minus 3 to the negative second power. And then when anti-differentiating, we can add 1 to the exponent to get x minus 3 to the negative 1, dividing by negative 1, which gives us negative times x minus 3 to the negative first power, which is what we ended up substituting in there. Of course, this final answer could be simplified a little bit if one wanted to, um, but this is a perfectly fine uh, format for the solution for this particular integral. If you'd like to try a similar example, you can pause the video and evaluate the integral of 3x plus 4 over x minus 3 quantity squared dx. The solution will appear in a few seconds. Because our denominator has a repeated linear factor of x minus 3 squared, our partial fraction decomposition will have the form a constant a over x minus 3 plus a constant b over x minus 3 squared. We clear the denominators to get 3x plus 4 equals a times x minus 3 plus b. 
We can then substitute x equals 3 into that equation, and we get 13 equals b. Uh, there's nothing really to solve for there since we end up getting exactly that equation. And then to find a, we can use any other value of x as long as we substitute 13 in for b. Here we pick an easy value to use of x equals 0, and that will give us 4 equals a times negative 3 plus 13, and we can solve for a to get a equal to 3. And so our constants in our partial fraction decomposition are a equal to 3 and b equal to 13. Substituting these values into our partial fraction decomposition gives us the integral of 3 over x minus 3 plus 13 over x minus 3 squared, and this integrates to 3 natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 13 times the quantity x minus 3 to the negative first power plus c.